Whether it's the Northwest Provincial Executive uh, Committee's influence or Supra Mahumopelo has had a chance of a uh, change of heart, I should say, the Northwest Province stalemate over the fate of the Premier continues. After announcing his intention to resign by yesterday, Mahumopelo, together with the PEC, issued a statement saying that they would rather wait for the processes of the ANC. Joining us now is uh, TK Pue. He is a public policy specialist to help us unpack some of what happened yesterday. Good to see you. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I mean, a very um, interesting turn of events. So we get breaking news that the Premier had resigned and this happened uh, late on what night? What day are we on? We're on Thursday. This came out on Wednesday night. And everyone's think thinking, OK, so uh, the Premier has resigned and then everything changed yesterday. I mean, tell me, what do you think was going on there? No, like I, I compare it to taking out insurance when you do your funeral covers. Maybe he, by himself he did want to resign, but you have to remember politics, especially patronage, is about taking out the insurance policy on a certain someone. And maybe he's the people who know, because not just him who would fall. So the people who maybe were close to him were like saying, remember, Chief, we've all taken out policies on you. So for you to simply resign by yourself is a cost to us. So maybe rethink your understanding of what is happening. Yeah. So or maybe it was just maybe being insincere when he said he wants to resign. So I think it can only be one of those two things, really. So then, obviously, what, what happens was the, the, the PEC is saying, absolutely not, we're not going to accept his resignation. What do you think is behind this? I mean, let, let's, let's discuss the PEC. Have they perhaps got too much to lose or... Is there more to this? What do you think? I think you have to just look at the composition of the PC, the PC firstly. And it, remember, PC is, can sometimes be seen as a representative of the chairperson of the ANC himself. So really, it's people who are very loyal to him, people who have stuck with him through thick and thin. So what else were they going to do, really? I think they just want to put up a facade speaking about rules and processes of the ANC, which it could be right, which again speaks to maybe the weakness of the ANC constitution, which allows, I think, for too much federalism in a, in a sense. And now they'll just basically play it out or it could just be a very good uh, way of negotiating say okay listen surely the man will step down but w when they speak to the NEC what's going to happen to us mm. is he mm. either a going to say listen okay I'm willing to step down and my PC will accept it but in my place I want somebody I can trust to look after my interests while I'm there yeah. so it could just be strong handing uh, strong arming the current president uh, Sir Ramaphosa well you're not the first analyst to say that in fact I read a comment uh, I think it was an analyst that was talking to us uh, here at the SABC yesterday saying that Supra's arrogance is actually attributed to our president Sir Ramaphosa's failure to exercise authority uh, would you agree with something like this I would agree to a point and I think the point being that people have to remember President Sir Ramaphosa that doesn't have a constituency within the ANC. This is a person who's been away in business, uh, I, think before, I think during the 90s. So he really hasn't got what, what you term a quote unquote a base of his own. So if you notice how he's operated, he goes by consensus. And this consensus because there is no strong Sarah Ramaphosa province or even a region. It's somebody who was brought in to say, listen, the ANC is in a bit of state of disrepair. The former president has done X, Y, and Z. Can you please help us? So he's basically working on the graces of people who say, listen, we buy into this new dawn or this vision of yours. So it's not as easy as, because sometimes I think people want to make, politics is not black and white. Politics has got a nuances of different shades of gray. And I think he's just operating in the gray. And he knows from, a, from his legal background that, listen, to move too quickly isolates people, to move too slowly as his accusation kind of buys him more time. It's not great, I'm not going to lie. I mean, to, for him to have left London to come here to sort out an issue we all want to be sorted out. Yeah. But it's an issue of saying he has to move according to processes and systems, and I think the systems are rather quite slow. Yeah, it, it, it appears that way because, I mean, we look at this and we wonder... Who should be deciding on this matter? I mean, you've got the PAC, PEC saying, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. Um, uh, but where does this leave the ANC-NEC? Well, uh, when you actually look at the Constitution, especially Rule 25, 17, 4 and 6, and also possibly, I think, 16, you actually see that where they could possibly say, listen, Mr. Supra, you've brought the organization to a bit of disrepute. He's using these four or three clauses. But the issue is to say, where do you exactly nail him? Because what is he? Because I think his main argument is to say, what have I actually done wrong? 
and, and if I can't bring that proof, because I know people speak about issues of corruption. Now, corruption becomes, it's a legal matter and nothing has gone to court. So I'd rather set that aside. Mm -hmm. So it's an issue where you can say, what have I actually done honestly wrong? And we've seen this play out before when the former president asked the very same question. Tell me in terms of the constitution and ANC processes, what have I done wrong? And I think that's maybe where his covering is. And I think if he plays it out to the long term, I think he knows he's got the ANC a bit by the nose to say, listen, I can keep this up going till 2019. I'm very comfortable with this situation. You guys cannot afford to have that. And I think they're going to have to give him a nice exit package, which might include things the public might not be privy to. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that I can imagine is part of this whole deal. But, I mean, help me out here and help South Africans out. Who appoints premiers and then who in turn should actually remove premiers? Well, by the letter of the law, I think it's the council would be the legislature's appoint. Now, what the ANC has always done, they've always had the, the, the Tuli House will have their preference and they'll push their preference and they'll ask the caucus to follow suit. And if one only has to remember the situation of the Free State where the former Premier, Mr. Isma Khashula, was not a favourite of the former President Thabo Mbeki. Hence, he was never a Premier during his time. The ANC did not allow that to happen. But what has happened post uh, the Mbeki regime has been that the ANC has allowed, I think, a lot of these regions and provinces to have a lot of their own power. It was maybe the style of pres former President Jacob Zuma where he said, listen, I'm more worried about national issues. You do, I think the Americans say, you do you type of mm. thing. And now the mm. situation has been where these provinces and especially leaders, or some of them who are very demagoguery in their actions, have been empowered to such a level where they can be arrogant towards the NEC and actually say, what are you going to do to me if I say no? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got now the formation of an interministerial task team that's going to come into the province and, and look into all these allegations of corruption and fraud and mismanagement and everything that has been going on in the province, which has led to, uh, A, the loss of lives, a lot of loss of income, and protests that, as you mentioned previously in the interview, that actually brought our president back from vital meetings in, in the UK. Now, I mean, when you bring this interministerial committee led by... Um, and of course, at Lamini Zuma. And then at the end of the day, you bring Supra back as the premier of the province. Does it make any sense to you? I think one of the things I'm very tired about is these these interministerial committees, yeah, yeah. commissions. I always call them, it's like uh, flights of fancy. They tell you what you want to hear, but when you actually ask them what they've done, we see nothing. Because I think they don't carry that legal stick. And this maybe just brings to the question what I think I always go on about. What, as in we're in 24 decades in, if you look at the poverty lines of Northwest Province, I think it's one of the highest social grant recipients, which basically says, look, employment is rather quite low. And as you were saying about the indicators of platinum, a lot of the mining companies have not been doing very well that side. Mm. You look at the issue of how royalties have been dispersed among communities. And what you actually see is a province in a lot of dire straits. And I think that is the key issue that oh, as well as this, as long as this politics has been going on, people have been suffering. Now, that for me is my key concern. And I think these communities missions and these flights of fancy hardly ever actually put anyone to account. I mean, we have to ask how many people have actually gone to jail from these commissions and from these, uh, these investigations. And I think as long as that happens, the sad thing is that people start to lose trust in what the state can do. And I think that's a bigger problem where people start saying, we know this language of the state, that there's always somebody who comes in, they always investigate, it takes a year, but nothing happens. And you tend to start seeing people protesting, taking baby actions into their own hands. And I think which basically speaks to the fact that people are beginning to say, listen, we've seen this song and dance for the last 24 yeah. years. Yeah. And Northwest is interesting in this sense. It used to be the former Buputa Tswana. Mm -hmm. And now Mahikeng used to be the jewel of Mahikeng, of uh, I think Northwest province. And I, I think I'll just maybe give your viewers a little, the BRT system, which is now starting to go across South Africa, actually used to work in Mahikeng back in the days of apartheid. So when you speak to people from that province, especially that region, they actually can tell you we've seen our lives deteriorate to the level we've never seen before under this ANC administration. Yeah. Yeah. We speak to the fact that, listen, there has not really been a vision and a plan for provinces like the Northwest. It should not be suffering with all the resources and also natural beauty it has. Absolutely. Let, let's, let's take a break. When we return, we, we'll take a little bit of a different angle because now there's talk of conspiracy and we're hearing words coming from the Premier himself saying, that he wants to sue and aggressively sue the Revolutionary Council. Who are the Revolutionary Council? Help me out. I have no idea. Let, let's, let's try and get a little bit of understanding. This will happen after the break. Stay tuned.